DFG Science TV discreet optimizes many roads lead to the destination how math simplifies our daily life so far we've only encountered genuine networks for example of roads or a canal Today we're going to encounter a new problem where the network is completely abstract and is only used as a mathematical tool. Stacking. Children enjoy it and so do our discrete optimizers. For example, in a steel factory, the hot molten steel is cast into slabs weighing several tons. Although it may not look like it, no two slabs are quite the same. Once they've been cast, the slabs are rolled into sheets. Because it doesn't always make sense to cast the slabs in the same order as they will later be rolled in, they often need to be stored in the meantime. But space is scarce, so they are stacked. Stacking can be a complicated business though, because it's all too easy to end up in a real mess. If the slab that's needed next is accidentally put at the bottom of the stack, the crane may do a lot of work that could otherwise have been avoided. In such cases, a mathematical algorithm can help the crane operator by telling him which slab to move from where to where, and in which order. This task also has something to do with networks. Every way in which the slabs can be stacked, referred to as a storage state, forms a node. Two nodes are linked if you can get from one state to the other with just a single crane movement. In other words, if you only need to move one slab from one stack to another. One of the nodes represents the current storage state and another represents the required final state. That node is necessary so that the slabs can be rolled in the right order. A path from the initial state to the target state represents a sequence of crane movements. This network is unbelievably large because the number of nodes more than doubles when considering just one additional slab. This network is too big even to be stored in a computer. Here a trick is used that allows you to consider just a small portion of the network. Starting with the initial storage state, you begin by looking at all of the neighbouring states. Then move to the best one, evaluate its neighbours, then go to the next best one, evaluate its neighbours, and go to the next best one, and so on and so forth, until you've reached the target state. This algorithm can only find a good stacking plan very fast because the mathematicians have come up with a way of evaluating the storage states that addresses the core of the problem. You can apply an algorithm regardless of whether the network really exists or we simply came up with it for use as a model. At the end of the day, it's just the structure of the task that matters. And that's what's so great about mathematics. That if the same structure crops up again somewhere else, we can simply reuse our models and algorithms. For example, you can also look at shunting railway wagons as a form of stacking, even though they aren't really being stacked at all. For the algorithm, it doesn't matter whether you're stacking slabs of steel, containers or anything else for that matter. Of course, not every problem in real life has such a clear mathematical formulation as stacking. In our other practical projects, we sometimes encounter really nasty constraints. But even if the tasks get tricky and have many complex details, the mathematicians need to find solutions. Demanding challenges are there to be overcome, after all. Let's go for it! Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.